I visited Belle Glade, Florida on a hot day in March of 23. Belle Glade sits south of Lake Okeechobee, which is the third largest freshwater lake in the U.S. outside of the Great Lakes. In this video, we're going to not only see a good majority of the city, but I'll talk about multiple issues that the city faces, such as poor living conditions, high crime rates, high poverty rates, and no economy to speak of outside of agriculture. But hey, at least the city has been a factory for NFL players, right? Well, towards the end of the video, I'll be giving Belle Glade a Chris livability score, so make sure to stay tuned for that. I begin the video on the far north end of town, near the airport. Up ahead I make a right turn, and I'll show you the giant sugar mill that's in town, which leaves a huge stink in the air. I used to live in southern Indiana, which is a big agriculture state, and every once in a while, you would get a big whiff of pig manure. Add a scent of burning sulfur and rotten eggs, and that's what the stench from the sugar mill smells like. However, the sugar mill is located northeast of town, and most of the time, people in town aren't able to smell it but it basically represents the entire economy of this area. The Palm Beach Post claims that there are over 12,000 jobs in the sugar industry during the season for the region. Some claim that over half of the nation's sugarcane is grown in the Glades region, and some have even given the area the title of being the nation's capital for winter vegetables. Well, after driving by the sugar mill, I skip towards the southwestern edge of town before driving up Main Street, and I'll be showing you some really sad-looking parts of downtown and the rest of the city. By the end of this video, if you want to see even more of Belle Glade, you can check out my second channel called Chris Harden's Travel Archives, and I'll have a second video uploaded on that channel that will show you all of the footage that I filmed of Belle Glade but didn't use for this video, so make sure to check that out after watching this one, and of course, after hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. As we pass the sugar mill, I'll mention that Belle Glade is one of three cities in South Central Florida that I visited while in the area, the other two being South Bay and Pahokee, so make sure to stay tuned for videos on those places as well. The name of Belle Glade was given to the city in the 1920s with the official slogan of the Belle of the Glades. Well, let me tell you up front that today, there ain't much Belle about this Glade, and I don't know if there ever was. Belle Glade is sometimes called the Muck, or Muck City, and that's more accurate. Sometimes the name of Muck City is used to refer to the trio of small cities in this area. There's even a road that heads east of Pahokee that's called Muck City Road. The name comes from the abundance of muck in the soil for the region, which is favorable for sugarcane to grow. The muck comes from the floodwaters of Lake Okeechobee that deposited a thick layer of black silt over the miles and miles of flat wetlands south of the lake. That was, of course, before engineers built the area's flood control system. The Everglades is most often thought of as a giant swampland that's full of sawgrass and gators, but the Everglades is actually a very slowly moving shallow river that used to carry water from Lake Okeechobee to the southern tip of Florida. That is, until Lake Okeechobee saw a levee and dike system. They call the Everglades the River of Grass. Native Americans called it Pahayoki which in English means grassy waters. Anyway, today, the northern half of the Everglades has been turned into agriculture fields and is called the Glades, which is where we are, while the southern half is all a part of Everglades National Park. From here, I skip the footage to the opposite end of town, and we're going to head through this trailer park which is on the far southwestern edge of Bell Glade. Bell Glade sits in far western Palm Beach County, which, ironically, is among the top five wealthiest counties in all of Florida. When most people from the U.S. hear of the name of Palm Beach County, they might know where that is, as most people in the country have heard of the cities of Palm Beach and West Palm Beach, so people would automatically assume that Palm Beach County would be where those cities are. Or maybe some people have heard of the city of Boca Raton, but I would bet that very few have heard of Belle Glade, and after seeing this video, it would be hard for most people to believe that Belle Glade is a part of one of Florida's top five wealthiest counties because none of the wealth can be found anywhere around here. In fact, most of Belle Glade is really sad looking and the housing stock through most of the city, not all, but most, is not in good shape at all. 
While I say this all the time, as in order to understand why a place is the way that it is, you have to at least have somewhat of an understanding of its history. We've already talked about Lake Okeechobee quite a bit, and I have one more thing to add about that, as in 1912, construction and engineering began to build the canals in the area in order to control the floodwaters of Lake Okeechobee. At that point, the levee system and the dikes were not there yet. But of course, the canals being built through the land is what allowed the area to see its first permanent settlers, in which the only mode of transportation for a long time around here was by boat. In 1921, the railroad arrived, and at that point, the settlement that was once called Hillsboro was able to grow into an actual town. The name was changed to Belle Glade in the 1920s during a resident vote in a hotel lobby. That hotel, however, was destroyed in 1928, as was much of the rest of the town when a major hurricane came through and flooded Lake Okeechobee so bad that there were 2,500 people who lost their lives in the area. That led to the construction of the Hoover Dyke around the lake for even better flood protection for the next time that Mother Nature struck. After the hurricane of 1928, farming continued to expand in the area as roads started to be paved. Packing houses were plenty in the area where farmers would pack truckloads of their product to eventually be shipped off on the railroad. Throughout the 1930s, migrant workers were brought to the area to work on the farms. Living conditions were terrible for these people, made up mostly of blacks and Mexicans. In 1945, during World War II, German prisoners of war were sent to a camp east of Belle Glade near what was called the Everglades Experiment Station. There was a second camp in the nearby town of Clewiston to the west, and there were 22 of these camps in Florida altogether. In Belle Glade, these prisoners of war worked for 80 cents a day for the farmers in a bean canning factory and in the sugarcane fields, in which the farmers needed to be persuaded to hire them. Sometimes payments would be made in the form of coupons for cigarettes and beer. More on the history timeline of Belle Glade in a bit, as to the left is Glade Central High School, home of the Raiders. 96% of students are considered to be economically disadvantaged. As many as 93% are on the free lunch program, with another 3% being on the reduced lunch program. The school performs low in both math and reading, with only about 20% of the students scoring proficiently in each category. You can't argue about the school's football program, though, as among the most notable alumni includes NFL wide receivers Kelvin and Travis Benjamin, former NFL wide receiver and Super Bowl 43 MVP Santonio Holmes, former NFL defensive lineman Ray McDonald, and possibly the most underrated NFL running back of all time, Fred Taylor. Now, that was just a small list of some of the more well-known players to come out of Glade Central High, as the list is much larger than that. The nearby town of Pahokee has an impressive list, too. To the right is the abandoned Glades General Hospital. The building was constructed in 1965 with the second edition, constructed as recently as 2000. The Palm Beach County Healthcare District assumed ownership of the hospital in 2004, and just a year later, the building was said to have sustained damages from Hurricane Wilma. At that point, the county determined that the building was outdated, and they started building a newer hospital on the northwest end of town. Glades General Hospital closed in 2009, and it's been sitting here abandoned ever since. We're now heading north on Main Street, and this area is where all of the commercial business is in town. It's nothing more than your typical fast food chains, dollar store chains, and a few other grocery stores and home goods stores, but outside of this little area here, there isn't much business throughout the rest of Belle Glade. This is pretty much all there is. And while we're looking at all of that, we'll go over some more history of Belle Glade. Now, the muck has always had a negative reputation. In the 1980s, when AIDS was still being learned about by society, Belle Glade was labeled as the AIDS capital of the world, as it once had a rate as high as one case for every 541 people, a rate that was 51 times higher than the national average. Most of you know, but for the few who don't, this was during an era where society had a huge negative perception of AIDS. If you want to know more, look up the story of Ryan White from Kokomo, Indiana. The AIDS epidemic started in 1981, and the year was 1985 when Belle Glade received that title, so it was pretty early on in the AIDS epidemic. The outbreak in Belle Glade quickly became a national headline, and it put the town on the map as it was the first time that many people across the country had heard about Belle Glade. At this point in the city's history, drug usage was unfortunately out of control, 
which is what kind of started the problem and started the spread. People would often pick up a used, dirty, and contaminated needle on the sidewalk and street, and that is kind of how things started. That, mixed with a high rate of prostitution in town, led to not only a high rate of HIV, but other STDs as well. Other reasons for the outbreak occurring is that during the 1980s, Belle Glade would see as many as 10,000 migrant workers from Haiti, Jamaica, and the Bahamas come into town during the season to work in the fields. They often brought drugs with them, and then they would sometimes trade sex for drugs. So yeah, recipe for disaster. Additionally, Haiti is a country that saw an outbreak around the same time that we're speaking of. This outbreak made people avoid stepping foot in Belle Glade, and it took a major hit on the economy in the 80s, as nobody was coming through town anymore to spend any money. We're now starting to get into the downtown area, but anyway, more or less talked about from the 80s era in this town was the living conditions. The temporary housing for the migrant workers was always terrible, but people who lived here year-round didn't have things much better. It was rare for an air conditioning unit to be working properly in many of the town's homes and apartment buildings, for example. And when you're living in poverty, such as many of the people of Belle Glade are, it's not like you have the money available to buy a new unit, or if you're renting, it's not like the landlords do much to maintain the buildings. Also in the 80s, I saw multiple articles when looking things up about the town that trash and human waste would be lining the streets and yards more often than not. And unfortunately, things aren't that much better today in some of Belle Glade's apartment buildings. Back in February of 23, which was shortly before I came to town, a video went viral showing what some of the living conditions in town were currently like, and I'm sure that you could find it easily if you did a search. Many of the apartment buildings that we have yet to see in this video are in terrible shape, and honestly, it's really sad that some of the people in town have to live that way. Off camera, I had a quick conversation with a local while I was here, and the guy couldn't have been nicer. He worked at the high school, and I doubt that he lived in these apartment buildings that I'm speaking of, but some of the students at that school most certainly do. So I'm not trying to say that everyone who lives in Belle Glade or that every home or place of residence is as bad as I'm describing, but there's most certainly enough people in town who do live in those conditions for it to be a legit concern for the city. Anyway, as we head through, you'll see a lot of residents just standing and sitting around outside in the shade with laundry being set outside to dry as if standing outside in the shade was a cheaper way or maybe in some cases it's the only way to cool off under the hot and humid South Florida sun. With that said, I'll transition into talking about the economic stats for Bell Glade. Here you can see the population history. The town has seen some up and down trends in the population count since 1990, but it's mostly stayed around that 16,000 number. The most recent estimates, however, show that there are 16,700 people in Belle Glade, Florida, and the median household income is $33,000 per year, which is less than half of that for the United States as a whole. Only 10% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $119,000, while the poverty rate is nearly 35%, which is a higher rate than one out of every three. It's kind of crazy when you look at the numbers for Palm Beach County right next to it. We're now about to turn off of the main drag through town and into the heart of downtown. After that, we'll continue to drive around the central parts of Belle Glade. Well, now moving on to the crime rates, as it's no secret that Belle Glade has had some major issues there over the years. The most recent data shows that Belle Glade has a violent crime rate of just over 900 for every 100,000 residents, while the property crime rate is 2,500 for every 100,000 residents. That property crime rate actually isn't all that bad, but that violent crime rate, yeah, that's nothing to celebrate about. But I will say that it's a much lower violent crime rate than what Belle Glade saw back in 2007, which was as high as 3,000 for every 100,000 residents. In fact, they say that in 2003 that Belle Glade had the highest rate of violent crime in the country. In 2010, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office claimed that half of the young men in Belle Glade between the ages of 18 and 25 had felony convictions. It's sad, but not surprising, because usually in communities with extremely high poverty rates, 
you'll almost always see a really high crime rate. And that's the case with Bell Glade. You can see that downtown doesn't have much to write home about. It's tough to say what the solution is for Bell Glade. If someone had a solution, you'd think that the problem would be solved by now. The housing stock in town is awful, but there's not much you can do about that if there's no money to fix it. There are no high-paying jobs in town, but how can you convince a company to set up shop in Bell Glade if there's not a strong talent pool of young professionals? I guess it helps that there's a Palm Beach State College branch on the west end of town these days, but there's not much of a reason for people to want to stay in Bell Glade if they're trying to find a route to help their career path. It also doesn't help when you have officers who worked at the Glades Correctional Institution who, back in 2010, ended up being arrested on drug and bribery charges. Do a news Google search for Bell Glade and you'll come across all kinds of violent crime that makes the headlines. You see a lot of man dead, another hurt in shooting in Bell Glade, or shooting in Bell Glade leaves one injured, SUV riddled with bullets, two hospitalized after a brawl at Crossroads Academy in Bell Glade. I guess there's this, however, which is positive news for the community. HCA Florida opens multi-specialty clinic in Bell Glade. I tried emailing a few people from the area for an interview on the video, but no luck there. For the next several minutes, however, I continued driving around the central areas of Bell Glade, and much of it all looks the same. Boarded up old apartments and shops. The shops that are open look like they need repairs. It looks like every occupied apartment building needs repairs too. It's sad. But at this point in the video, I've talked about pretty much every key detail on Bell Glade's history and how it's pretty much always been the same city, with poor living conditions and high crime rates, the economy has never been much of anything outside of migrant work on the farm, which is not a high paying job at all, but maybe one day in the future the city will be able to turn things around. It seems like it's on the right path with the crime rates trending down continuously over the last decade, so that's good at least, but only time will tell.
Well, it is now that time in the video for Chris's livability score. The first category is education, and while the schools don't perform anywhere near the best, I've seen much worse in cities like St. Louis and Detroit, for example, so education gets a 7 out of 20. The crime rates in Belle Glade are awful, but they're not as bad today as they have been in the past. Yet, it's an issue that the community needs to continue to work on because it's not acceptable at all to be seeing headlines of some sort of shooting happening every month. And there's always the question of how much crime goes unreported. It gets a 3 out of 20. Downtown is the next category, and there's not much happening in downtown Belle Glade these days. As you saw, there was a lot of closed up shops, but there was also a lot of trash lying around, and it appeared as lively as a Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. It gets a 2 out of 20. There is no economy in Belle Glade outside of agriculture, as I've stated several times in the video. Hopefully that can change soon, but as of today, there are no high paying jobs in town at all, unless you work at the hospital. It gets a 1 out of 20. Recreational opportunities is next, and actually there are some places where you can get out and enjoy nature nearby. Just make sure to bring your bug spray. Lake Okeechobee is nearby where you can get on a boat and go fishing, and there's even a 110 mile long Florida National Scenic Trail that circles the lake. That just seems like the recipe for a heat stroke in the humid Florida sun, but I'm sure that there are people who have done it and have been alright doing it. Well, anyway, Recreational Opportunities gets a 10 out of 20. The history of Belle Glade is certainly interesting, and it tells a lot about the place. You could talk about the history of Belle Glade for days, it seems like. It gets a 14 out of 20. There isn't much in town in the form of amenities. You would have to travel quite a ways east until you see anything outside of cheap fast food joints. It gets a 2 out of 20. The cost of living here isn't an issue in Belle Glade. So if affordability is all you're looking for and you don't care about anything else, you're in luck. It gets a 20 out of 20. All in all, the Chris Livability score for Belle Glade, Florida is 59 out of 160, which puts it in last place out of all of the places that I've done the Chris Livability score for so far. You know, I always go about with the mindset in life that I think that most people in life are good people, including the people who live in Belle Glade, Florida. And I think that most people root for places like Belle Glade, but nobody knows what to do or how to fix the problem, which is why the problem hasn't yet been fixed for not only Belle Glade, but for so many other communities out there that are poverty stricken, such as Belle Glade is. Hopefully things can improve in the future when my doppelganger from the year 2085 makes a video on Belle Glade. Hopefully it's a different story. In the meantime, if you want to see more of what Belle Glade, Florida looks like, you can check out my second video on Belle Glade, Florida. It will be uploaded on my second channel called Chris Harden's Travel Archives, and I basically just drove around the city some more and some of the outlying surrounding rural areas. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, along with hitting that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. And to see a video of Pahokee, which is a similar town nearby, make sure to check out this video here. Peace.